gone to the 442 barangays in our in our district and uh, sad to say the far barangays do not feel the services of the province uh, as a matter of fact in in uh, the hometown of attorney pulgar uh, in upper kalawag uh, the barangay captains decide not anymore to go to lucena because they do not see help coming to them. So you can just imagine in the barangays of Ginyangan, in the barangays of Tagkawayan, even in the, uh, the first district where we have different island municipalities. Uh, service from, from uh, the provincial capital is not felt. And so we feel that if we, if we divide the province, there's an opportunity to bring government closer to the people. And by, by doing that, uh, there will be a faster faster reaction or proaction from the provincial government. And what led you to the conclusion that the only solution is precisely the formation of a, of a new province? Did you, what steps did you try to, let's say, force uh, the, the provincial leadership to attend to their constituents? Well, well uh, right, uh, in uh, 1998, uh, well, we can even go back as early as 1995, uh, because the, the first bill that was filed was in 1996 by my, my father after Typhoon Rusing. And this is where uh, Bishop Marquez saw the difficulty of the provincial government in uh, bringing assistance to the typhoon ravaged areas. And uh, we, we supported governors who had promised mm -hmm. that, that uh, they would uh, uh, help in the development of uh, South Quezon, but it is sad uh, that uh, development has been slow. So we, see t we seem to see that allocation of resources, especially in, the s in South Quezon and in parts of the no North Quezon, have, have been not equal. And uh, we've been trying to convince our board members because we, in, in the 4th district we have three board members, mm -hmm. in the 2nd mm -hmm. district there's two, to try to campaign within the provincial capital. But uh, it seems that uh, the, the govern, governor is too powerful. You know? That uh, allocation of resources sometimes uh, uh, is not really looked at. For example, in, in, uh, in uh, the last uh, uh, election cycle, from 2004 to 2007, the last governor, uh, we, in terms of agriculture, the funding for agriculture for the whole province, if I'm not mistaken, is less than a million pesos. So for the whole, for the whole province, you can just imagine. So how, how can we, we help develop agriculture, considering that Quezon is an agricultural province? Okay, uh, now, Mr. Malala, yeah, uh, we have a question get for first me. to the side of Attorney Pulgar, so we get both sides right, sure. before going to your question. Thank you for that. Attorney, first of all, begin your pangalan ng group on you because uh, I called it uh, Pipsqueak <laughs> Movement because uh, you guys na sa labas kayo ng Colombo, so. Well, actually, it's really Pipsqueak, but uh, first of all, uh, Manolo, I, I just, as I said uh, a while ago, the irony did not escape me because I'm now. Uh, in the presence of uh, the, the two grandsons of the greatest uh, men who have uh, ever uh, lived in the, the province of Quezon, Manuel Quezon and uh, Lorenzo Tanyada. Both uh, of them are my idols. At any rate, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we organized this uh, Save Quezon Province movement uh, last August 11, August 18 actually. That was the birthday of uh, President Quezon when we announced the our organizational uh, meeting and uh, our first salvo when we announced that we are opposing the division of Quezon into two. Now, what are your reasons for opposing? Because Congressman Tanyada has laid out a case saying, <laughs> kahit gusto nilang manatiling buo yung probinsya, hindi naman pinapansin yung mga distrito nila. So what else is well, left for them yeah, to do? Well, I beg to disagree with my good uh, kababayan uh, and my primo, uh, Congressman uh, Tanyada. Because uh, prior to the filing of these uh, bills, as he said, during the time of uh, Congressman, uh, former Senator Bobby Tanyada in 1996, I never encountered any clamor or any, uh, shall I say, quickening of, the, uh, of these demands from the grassroots, from the barangay captains, 
to the municipal mayors, to the councillors, to the provincial board. There was no groundswell of uh, of, uh, of clamor for the division of Quezon. I did not see any any uh, demands for for the division. Precisely, according to Congressman Tanyada, there was that uh, apparently mismanagement of uh, the of the scant uh, resources of the province, and apparently most of this. Uh, uh, as he said uh, in in, uh, in 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 the in the uh, first in the third and the fourth district uh, where the proposed uh, Quezon del Sur is uh, supposed to be uh, established most of the barangays uh, according to him are uh, are apparently ignored by the uh, provincial capital I, I beg to disagree because uh, uh, there is no there is no uh, apart. I would say uh, there is nothing. Uh, I did not feel that, uh, Manolo. So uh, now, if you were going to lay down arguments to say why the province should remain whole, what are, what arguments will you give to to the electorate to have to decide? Well, if the province is uh, if the province remains as as one. I think development uh, will be assured. Because look, uh, if the province will be divided into two, the proposed Quezon del Sur will be deprived of the uh, real property tax being collected from the two uh, power plants. One in Mauban, and this, the, the other one is in uh, Pagbilao. And uh, we, are, we are aware that uh, real property taxes are uh, collected by the LGU. The moment there is a Quezon del Sur, Quezon del Norte will, uh, will collect uh, and uh, enjoy this RPT, or real property taxes. Okay, now we, we, like, we can go to the question uh, from the floor. To uh, his question, all right, mm -hmm. here we go. Uh, hi, Irene from CSSP. I'm curious, there's like this big elephant in the room. We're, we're, we keep talking about voters, dynasties. Um, what's interesting is that where people could actually move from one province to the other, uh, whereas the land would remain the same. My point is, this is I, I think this is not so much as an issue of the people moving, but who owns the land and thus who could run for positions in those lands which they could cut for one. Another is, my, my other question is, my, my, my question actually is that I'm curious, is it, really a pro is it really an issue of bringing government closer to the people? Since they have barangay officials, isn't government close to them already given that they have governing bodies like a barangay council? Yes, uh, that, that is true. No? Uh, I, I want to thank you for your question. But we should also look at the fact that uh, funds of the barangays are not that big in order to to have a development plan for a certain barangay. So, so uh, we've. But this brings up an interesting question because the the the, the reason I brought up so many yeah. divisions coming up now is your 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 funding pie is fixed in terms of the national budget. Ang ibig sabihin nito yung pondo na dapat dapat sa buong probinsya dati ngayon paghahatian pa niyo. So you're going to have a smaller. Uh, uh, allocation anyway well, from the national government. If you look at it, uh, if in terms of allocation, it's really happening right now. Now, if, if it's a question of dividing how much funds that's going to go to the district, we would be even increasing it by at least 100 million because uh, the Quezon province, in terms of ERA, the internal uh, revenue allotment, gets 1.1 billion pesos. No? Now, if Quezon del Sur is created, and Quezon del Norte is also created, Quezon del Sur will have uh, an era of 561,699,000, while Quezon del Norte will have 684,238,000. So if you add the two, it's close to 1.2 billion. So it's even an increase. Now what we are ins uh, ensuring here is that the allocation of Quezon del Sur would be already fixed. 
And how do you how do you simply by the creation of the province you would yes you would? because there there is a there's a formula based on 